Well, good evening, FBN. Uh, it's good to be back with you uh, in this setting. Uh, I want to start uh, this evening by just thanking, saying uh, thank you to Paul AC uh, for uh, filling in last week. Um, I always appreciate his perspective, mm -hmm. and uh, it's nice to just hear another voice and another perspective into the scriptures. Uh, as you've noticed, Proverbs is getting a little um, repetitive. There's a lot of common themes that are hit over and over again, and so uh, it was nice to hear his take and to take a tour of his home and just to see um, uh, what he had to say in regards to fear of the Lord and, uh, man, what good thoughts there. And so if you haven't listened to it, please uh, go back to last week and uh, take a listen. And uh, really, uh, really grateful for you, uh, Paul, for, for doing that. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys get burnt out on hearing about cystic fibrosis and foster care all the time. So <laughs> it's nice to change the, uh, change the pace a little bit. Um, but uh, all that to say, thank you, Paul. Uh, we're going to jump uh, back into Proverbs 3 this evening. Um, we're going to take a, a quick glance at, at uh, uh, verses 5 and 6, which is where we were two weeks ago. Uh, and we're going to take verses 5 and 6 all the way through uh, verse 12, looking at some specific themes um, or specific uh, um, points in regards to how we can trust the Lord uh, with all of our hearts um, in various uh, places of our lives. Um, now, we're going to hit this conversation a little bit, um, a little more head on, but I wanted to uh, talk to Kinsey about this. And just so you guys know, I didn't prepare her with this, uh, with this question. Normally, I give her a heads up as far as what the question is going to be. Uh, this one's a little, um, a little more, maybe, I guess, could push some buttons to an extent, but not, not really. Um, the question, Kinsey, is, uh, is simply this. Can you control your mind? Can you control the way you think? Do you have, do, does humankind have the capability of controlling how we think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, I, there you go, folks, right there. Yes, you do. I would say so. <laughs> um, okay. But not without the help of the Lord. Ah, there's a caveat. Yeah. Um, he tells us to take every thought captive. So, with his help, and his power, that means we can. <laughs> yeah, I would totally agree. But um, we have to we have to acknowledge the fact, and in in a very respectful way, it is um, extremely difficult. Yes, yeah. and some uh, even believers would say it is impossible. Impossible. Yeah. Um, I've tried. I've tried. I've prayed. I've prayed. Um, I've done this. I've done that, and yet I still. Um, have these thoughts I can't seem to yeah. control my thoughts I think that's where I would stop it is like it's not that things don't just pop up because I think that is just part of human nature or sin nature I'm not sure but I think everybody I think even the Lord probably had things pop up I mean they it says that he was tempted in every way so that means things mm. popped up in his mind that weren't welcome mm -hmm. um so it's not so much that your mind is completely innocent or clean or pure, even though his was. That's where mm -hmm. it gets, like, dicey. But we're still called to take every thought captive and to think about whatever's good, whatever's true, whatever's mm -hmm. noble. We're still called to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. Um, yeah. He knows who we are, but we're still called to more. Um, hmm. And I think with his power, we can at least make huge gains toward that. He expects us to grow in that way. And I think ultimately, in, in the end, I think that's part of the blessing of living with him for eternity, is that we truly won't be controlled by our minds. We'll be able to be in control of our minds and our thoughts. Um, yeah, in, in his power. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good thought, actually, one that I had not prepared for um, to use. But, I mean, it's a great thought that Jesus was tempted in every way, yeah. um, certainly mentally, especially as we think about the sensitive areas of depression, anxiety. Right. Um, I always think about... Yeah, I think about, we can give it, like, a sexual spin all the time, but I, I'm sure he was tempted to dislike everybody who he was with, everybody who he was asked to love and serve, or, yeah. you know, yeah. or, like you said, depression or... Or anxiety. I'm sure he was right. tempted to to do that. I mean, to go that way and um, to give into that. But yeah, yeah. Temptation takes. I mean, if he was tempted in every way, that means that 
the evil one. You know, Satan yeah. did probably try to tempt him, certainly in the temptation of Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. um, where he gives, you know, he, he shows Jesus pretty much the whole world and says, I'm going to give you all this stuff. And Jesus, um, you know, re- responds back with the word. Mm-hmm. But we also, you know, we don't like to think about Jesus being tempted with things that we struggle with, mm-hmm. uh, right? Um, so, uh, the whole sexual world and, and the sexualized culture that we live in, pornography, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you think about anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, laziness. But laziness. I mean, yeah. You look through Jesus' ministry, though, and he had plenty. I mean, he probably was tempted in so many ways to be judgmental. I mean, I always think about the woman caught in adultery, yeah. you know, uh, caught in the act. Um, and Jesus, at some point, is alone with her when mm-hmm. she has just been caught in the act, mm-hmm. you and know, because, which means she's exposed, and, yeah. and yet he handles it perfectly yeah. in Jesus' fashion. Because he was able to control his mind and his body and himself, he was able to serve her. He was able to help her. Right. And it's when we're controlled by all of those things and we don't have control that we can't serve somebody with mm. a genuineness and, um, you know, an openness you know, yeah. if you're so vulnerable to all of those things, then you're vulnerable. You don't have the armor of God on you. You can't serve. You can't love yeah. with that kind of freedom and that kind of, you know, abandon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then certainly the anxiety and depression world, you know. Um, I always think about Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane before he goes to the cross. I mean, he he had playing out in his head what was about to happen to him. I mean, he knew exactly, you know, that Mm -hmm. his flesh was going to be ripped off his back, that he was going to have his hands and feet nailed into the cross. Mm -hmm. And his mind was not in a good mental place. And yet, at the peak of that anxious and probably depressed, you know, place of of looking um, and and knowing what was to come, Mm -hmm. he said, not my will but yours be done. And he endured it. And... God glorified him as a result. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up. But just to underline that this is not easy, and that's why we have the word. That's why why we have to meditate on it. There's the cat over there. (laughs) We have to meditate on it, and we have to be part of the body so that we can encourage each other to not go down those paths to run Mm -hmm. the race together. Because it's it is a race. It's a marathon, and it's really hard. It's really hard to control your mind and your thoughts and. I would say probably most people, yeah, you just struggle with it constantly. Mm-hmm. It's a constant struggle for everyone, um, and yeah. we need each other to, you know, to speak truth and to not just be going the way of the world, of whatever the world's telling us is okay or is the only way to medicate it or to treat it or to help it, yeah. um, but that there are things in the Word that the, right. the world can't offer. Right, right. And that's exactly where we're going uh, tonight is we're going to look at hopefully – Um, some tools that maybe the Lord gives us in his wisdom uh, that will help us do what Jesus did, which is stand against the temptation of all of these different places um, and to do it in a way that uh, glorifies him. Um, So uh, with that being said, why don't we toss it to you? Um, You kick it around. Do you have control over your thoughts? Um, Think from the perspective of does humanity have control over their thoughts? Um, And then think about you personally. Is this something that you struggle with or is this something that you found tools and and helpful uh, things that that help you submit your thinking to the Lord uh, so that he might direct your heart, direct your hands uh, as a result of that thinking? So why don't you think about it for, for, for a few minutes here.
Well, welcome back. Uh, let's jump into our text here now. I hope that was a good discussion for you to start thinking about um, really what we're going to net out today is just the hope that is in Jesus Christ, that even if we have a, a battle or a struggle, um, something that we deal with, even if it's a whole life long, um, that there is still hope, there is still um, the possibility of victory, there will be ultimate victory that we can look forward to, um, and there will always be something more that we can do to, uh, to approach that victory in the confidence of the promises of God throughout Scripture, one of those promises being right here in Proverbs chapter uh, 3. Let's start in uh, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all of your ways, know him, and he will make your path straight. Okay? On all of your ways, know him, and he will make your path straight. Well, what are those ways? Um, right? There's a lot of ways in regards to decisions, right? I have this way I could take, this way I could take. I could major in this or, or that. I can date her or her. I can, I can you know, uh, in a matter of decisions, right, we, we kind of have these paths before us. But then we have these overwhelming paths, um, right, when it comes to just our physical selves, our mental selves, our emotional selves, these, these big paths um, that kind of make up who we are. And if we trust in the Lord in each and every one of those places, um, then he will direct our paths. He will set us on the good path um, that, is, um, that is most life-giving, right? And that's what he goes on uh, to talk about. Or at least that's what he, what he talked about before, but here in verses 7 and 8 is what he talks about here as well. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing to your body and strengthening for your bones. Right? We talked about these healing properties of, of following the Lord's wisdom over our own. If you look back in verse uh, 2, um, if, you know, we'll start in verse 1. My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands, for they will bring you many days of full life and well-being. Right? So if you just uh, oblige to the Lord's wisdom, oblige is a, not a great word, but if you adhere to it because you love the Lord, um, then the natural outcome um, is that you will live longer, and even if your days are numbered uh, shorter than what you think they should be, those days will be filled with, um, with uh, wealth. And by wealth, I don't mean material possessions. I mean just a wealth of spirit, a wealth of, of joy and, and peace and the things that the Lord provides immediately to our hearts uh, and our souls, right? Um, so you will have a life that is full, um, in, in the, e even if your days are short, your days um, will be full, okay? Um, and I don't know about you, but I would rather have sh a less amount of full days um, than a long amount of empty days, if that makes sense. So, um, he says in verse 7, um, this is where we need to start looking at this, you know, kind of where the rubber meets the road, okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. He says in verse 7, and this is huge, um, and this is probably the biggest um, enemy um, to trusting in the Lord, is that we tend to trust in ourselves, right? Don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Okay, this is the biggest culprit, right? It, we can trust the Lord or we're going to trust something man-made. We can trust self. We can trust our own wisdom. And this is where we get in, in uh, a heap of amount of trouble, uh, big heap trouble, right? Um, so what can we do, um, you know, to, to not be wise in our, own, in our own eyes? What are the things that we can do um, to stand against uh, trusting self over trusting God? Well, one of the things we can do is just be aware. Um, be aware of the wisdoms around us. Uh, many of us fasten ourselves to wisdoms that are presented to us, we take as gospel truth, but when you track it back all the way to its origin or source, what you're going to find is a man in a grave, um, right? But when it comes to gospel truth, when it comes to biblical wisdom from God, the thing is, is that that origin always tracks back to uh, a man who defeated the grave, the origin of that always tracks back to God himself, uh, and it tracks back to the scriptures here, right? So the very first thing that you can do in order to, uh, to be not wise in your own eyes is to take every piece of wisdom that you hear and that you feel tempted or inclined to, to take as truth and then test it against the scriptures. 
Test it against God's word. And if you find the origin of that wisdom in God's word, then great. Live by it, right? But if you cannot find it here, you just find it in um, the teaching of some smart dude from way long ago, um, or if you find it even in um, the preaching of even modern pastors who, for whatever reason, uh, neglect the preaching of God's word, and they preach their own word, right? Um, and it's very diluted when it comes to God's scriptures, and it's very robust uh, when it comes to just their catchy way of saying things that, that feel kind of empty, right? Test it. Uh, put all of the wisdoms that you hear to the test of God's word and track the origin. And if the origin leads you to God, then follow that. And if the origin leads you to, uh, to uh, another person, um, then ignore that. And listen to this. Um, uh, if the message is all about you, it's about finding um, wisdom within yourself, you know, from within yourself. If, if the message is all about just looking inside and that kind of stuff, then listen, that's not good either. Um, because you guys know just as well as I do, we are broken, sinful people. Our hearts are deceiving uh, above all things. We cannot trust our own wisdom. Certainly, we should not be trying to find fulfilling um, fulfillment and, and overall value in just our own um, essence of being, right? Um, there is no, you know, you can't just look deeper and deeper and deeper until you find what you're all about, right? The deeper and deeper you look, uh, the more and more gross it gets, um, that's where we need the Lord, right? We are all stained. We are all broken with this thing called sin. And we need a Savior. We need salvation. And it's only when we have Jesus Christ uh, that we can begin uh, to do what God calls us to in the Scriptures, right? To trust in Him in all of these places. So let that be just kind of the first kind of get going here. Verse 7, um, don't be wise in your own eyes. Right? If the origin of any wisdom that you're confronted with tracks back to just a man or tracks back to just you, and if the point is you, then, then it's not a wisdom worth following. Okay? And if you do this, it will be healing to your body and strengthening to your bones. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. Okay? Um, basically, the, the impact that following the Lord's wisdom that will have on, on your body is, is wonderfully um, uh, detailed, right? Because um, your body is is dignified. Uh, it is something that God created and created uh, with passion. And so, if we ignore Him and ignore, then then what happens is our body becomes corrupted. I mean, this is what sin does. It corrupts our body. And uh, talking about strengthening to the body and um, you know, or healing to the body and strengthening to the bones, right? Let's talk about the aspects of the human body um, that can become corrupted. Um, whenever we ignore the Lord's wisdom and turn to our own. And the first, obviously, is the physical self. We kind of talked about this. Literally, your body and bones. Um, if you reject the Lord's uh, wisdom, um, your body will be more prone to deteriorate. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom in there that avoids us of stress and anxiety and the things that wear on our bones. As uh, David said, you know, that his bones were wasting away. Um, we, we have this feeling um, we have this capacity in our in ourselves to to literally just let ourselves uh, waste away because we give ourselves to trusting of self and trusting of all these other things that create depression, create anxiety within us, and it, and we waste away, right? So there are a lot of physical ramifications for sure in just trusting the Lord, right? Not to mention the wisdom in there about taking care of your body and taking care, being a good steward of everything that he's given you. And if you do that right, then you're going to have um, a fuller experience. Okay. But it goes from uh, the physical also to the mental. Um, and so there's a word that I, I want to think about with, uh, with the mental being uh, there. And so let's talk about the mental thing. And the word that I want us to think about is hope. You see, no matter what you struggle with in these places, uh, first of all, uh, the Lord offers a hope uh, and a confidence um, that no matter what happens now, he has everything that we need and everything that we should ever live for or care for. He has it, and he has promised, that us, promised it to us 
in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will have everything you need. You will have all of the love and the joy and the peace and the sustenance that you will ever need in the name of Jesus Christ. You have this hope. You have this confidence. And man, that bears wonderful weight on the way we think. Right? Because even if you're in the harshest of times right now, in the middle of something absolutely miserable, and we've seen people who have been in that place, right? that hope will sustain. I always think of the Apostle Paul um, when he had a thorn in his flesh as he was rotting away in prison, and he pleads to the Lord, God, take this away from me. And, and Jesus says I, I, it, that my grace is sufficient for you. Right? So the Apostle Paul, even though he had this thorn and the answer to his prayer was not, okay, let me heal you of that. Let me pull that from you. The answer was, hey, you have this, but my grace is still sufficient for you. So even if you feel like your life is inflicted with thousands of, storm, of thorns, um, this is one of the wonderful things about Jesus Christ is that he can convert those things to remind you of his sustaining, powerful grace that will get you through um, anything uh, that you need to get through right? So hope, right? Hope of a redeemed past, hope of a better future. Uh, literally nothing bad that has happened before, nothing bad that will happen in the future um, can strip this from you in um, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ and the hope that he has afforded us on the cross, okay? Now here's another aspect of the mental game uh, that we need to uh, consider is that mentally um, what you think about bears great ramifications on what you feel and what you do, right? Uh, from the head to the heart to the hands is, is kind of how we, we like to think about it. Um, and most of it starts up there, and it dictates how you feel, what you desire, what you uh, start willing after. Um, and then when you have that there, right, your hands start going to work to create whatever that is that you're feeling uh, that was inspired by your thinking, does that make sense? Of course, it doesn't always work out that exact same way. But listen, with that in mind, uh, I'd love to share a few passages with you and then maybe uh, give a few pieces of advice in regards to just taking control um, of the way that we think. And obviously, you guys know this. I think that if you really want to take control of the way you think, um, you're going to submit your control completely to him and then let him reconstruct um, your, your thinking. Okay, so Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to go old school and actually going to flip there uh, in my Bible. Um, remember this thing with pages on it, right? You can use it. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Um, let's look at verse 8. You guys know this verse, I'm sure. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is uh, just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Dwell means to camp out in your mind, to live there mentally. Dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Now let me ask you a question. Do you want peace? And everybody shakes their head. Of course. If you don't want peace, um, then I, I don't even know what you are thinking about in your head. Something truly is wrong there, right? Everybody wants peace, right? Well, how do you get peace? Well, you think about it. Uh, you think about whatever is true and honorable and just, right? You fill your mind with these things. And then Kenzie uh, referred earlier to a passage in 2 Corinthians. Uh, that was 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. And this is about taking captive every thought, starting in verse 5 of chapter 10. Um, Let's start actually in verse 3. For although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought um, to obey Christ right? We take every thought captive to obey Christ. Now, the context here is talking about these other wisdoms, these other arguments out there, these big thoughts, right, that are contrary to the knowledge of God, anything that is proud and sets itself above God. And this is saying, take those thoughts, take those captives, take, the, take those, sorry, take those thoughts, take those wisdoms, submit them, right? Um, take them captive and make them obey the Lord, Right, those thoughts, those wisdoms, whatever they are, 
demolish the arguments in that and take every thought captive uh, to obey Christ, right? Now, the Bible seems to strongly imply that in the name of Christ and in the power of Christ, we certainly can take captive our um, thoughts, um, to take captive uh, other negative wisdoms that might penetrate our brains, and we might be tempted to believe those, but then when we track it to the origin, we find out it's just another man and not our Savior who, who, where that wisdom or, originates, right? Um, or if we just fill our brains with whatever is right and true and noble and all that stuff, that we can actually, in the power of Christ, control the way we think. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be harder for some than it is others, because it certainly is. Uh, you know, your backgrounds and things that have happened to you, traumatizing events, that kind of stuff, it does wear on your brain. But the point is this. There's always something to do. From wherever you're at, uh, however hard it is to think, uh, for you to think positively uh, in the confidence and promises of the Lord, right? there is something that you can do to make strides in that area. There is always hope. Right? So here's a few suggestions. Okay, the first is this, and it's most important. Uh, it's to know his promises. Um, to know his promises from this. To know that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, um, that if you acknowledge him in all your ways, that he's going to make your path straight. To know the promises that um, um, if you think about whatever is right and good and uh, noble and trustworthy and all that kind of stuff, that, that, that there will be peace. Right? Um, it's the promise of knowing that if you give thanks in all situations, he'll give you a peace that transcends understanding. Um, it's knowing the promises that, that all things uh, will work out to the good um, of those who trust in him and those uh, and, and will work out for his glory. It's, it's trusting in these promises and having a list of these promises that you can rehearse in your brain at any point in time that your thoughts become, uh, start taking you captive. Right? Because here's the thing. Um, um, captives can't take captives. Prisoners can't take prisoners. Um, if you're a prisoner of your brain, then you cannot take it prisoner. Um, what you need to do is submit your mind to Christ, become his prisoner, and then let him <laughs> create something in you um, that allows you to take captive. Right? And how do you do that? You've got to know his word. You've got to know the promises in here so that whenever that negative thought comes, whenever that thing strikes again in your mind, you can grab that thing and take it captive and submit it to the promises of God and say, no, this is not true because God says this, right? So know his promises. Second, uh, guard what comes into your mind, right? Protect what comes into your mind. Um, don't fill it with negative things. Don't watch negative things. Don't listen to negative things. I mean, if you want to think positively and if you want to uh, be uh, above uh, these other places, you know, this depressed state or this anxious state, then don't feed your brain with things that are going to feed that stuff. Be very serious about this, right? I know people have FOMO, fear of missing out. They think if they're not going to watch the latest show, if they're not going to uh, listen to the latest music, if they're not going to uh, totally stay fixed to social media all the time, that they're going to miss out on something. Listen, the only thing you might be missing out on is more anxiety, right? And I think that's okay to miss out on if that's what those things create in your life. So, so man up right? Uh, um, go on another social media fast, do whatever you need to do to start drawing lines, uh, understanding that those things dictate um, a, lot of, a lot of the ways that you think. We've made this statement before, but social media more and more, especially in younger people, is becoming, it's becoming bonded um, with suicide rates uh, these days. Um, it seems like every teenager, every young person who, who um, um, gets to that place, right, that they um, are that, that social media um, is at play in some way or form. That's, that's one of the byproducts of this, right? Of, despite all the good things, um, that is one of the byproducts. And we've, got, uh, we've got to take this seriously and to control what comes into our brains, right? God's give, given us that control. Um, uh, you can control what you listen to. You can control um, what you watch, okay? And the voices that you listen to. The third is this, um, and if it's not already assumed, uh, to proactively pray against that specific area. Now, be singular, being specific, and pray against that one thing and make it a habit of prayer. Proactively pray about it over and over again. Uh, um, fourth is this, uh, to, uh, to work with your hands. Um, this is a scientific thing. It's a biblical thing. Um, that working with your hands and having a, a project that you can see the accomplishment, you can see uh, the finished product, right? Um, 
whether that be you know uh, you take up painting on a canvas or or woodworking or or just having a resurgence of finding value in your your actual job whatever it is get busy um, that really helps your brain in so many different ways um, so so work um, fifthly uh, along that note exercise um, work on your body <laughs> I mean not in a vain way I'm just saying um, there is so much science behind just just being active and and doing things that actually help your blood flow and all that kind of stuff how you feel uh, bears wonderful weight on on um, how you how you feel in your body bears a lot of weight on how you think in your mind uh, for sure and then sixth um, is this it's to, to share it um, there's a lot of people who have suffered and had made terrible decisions uh, heartbreaking decisions because they suffered with these places in their mind because they never shared it they never let it, they, ne they never let anybody into that world um, and listen if that's you you've got to get it in the open you've got to make it uh, not something that you're praying about but something everybody's praying about it's got to be a collective effort because if you try to deal with it by yourself um, it, it's it's not good okay and I say all this again understanding that this is a sensitive topic, but listen, I've never met one person who has struggled with these things um, and um, maybe even in, in full level uh, and didn't shrug some of these, if not all of them, right? Um, there's a lot of people who struggle with this, but they refuse to eat right. They refuse to work out. They refuse to work with their hands. They refuse uh, to, uh, to guard what comes in. They still fill their heads with with terrible movies and, and music and things that just feed negativity. Um, so, you know, if you're serious about this battle with anxiety, depression, that kind of stuff, uh, again, not to be insensitive to, to where you're at on that. And I don't have it, I guess, so I don't fully understand maybe where you're coming from. But I would imagine in the realm of everything we just talked about here, there's something that you can do. Um, there's something that you can do because in the power of Christ and in the name of Jesus Christ, he's given you hope. He's given you something to live for, and he's given you a process in which you can trust the Lord in one of these ways so that in so that, in that he, he can make your path straight uh, in that area. Again, you might deal with it your whole life, but from now until then, do you want to be in the same place or do you want to make strides? And I think the Lord has promised in his scripture uh, that you can make strides. Uh, in the Lord. And so um, that's the mental part, physical, mental. Then you got the emotional, right? This is more, uh, less like a, uh, how do you say it? Um, less of what makes sense, like the mental game, less of what makes sense and more of how it feels, uh, right? And so within the realm of emotion you know we we have the kind of the whole sexual self uh coming to life what you do with your body what you um what you present and why you present it and what that makes you feel like and all that kind of thing. It's, it's it's finding value um in different things it's what you are seeking after and living for right again in all of these places uh, my encouragement to you is to check your instruments okay if you're struggling with the emotional allocation of where your trust goes um, check your instruments. I took this from a book called uh, Swipe Right from Levi Lusco, uh, and he talked about um, when, uh, oh man, this is going to date me because I'm super young and I can't remember the Kennedy guy's name that, that died in the plane crash, um, one of the Kennedys, and he died, I think, with his um, sister and sister-in-law or wife and sister-in-law. Um, you'll know um, if you're listening to this you'll know about the story but the result was it, there's a plane crash he was driving the plane um, and when uh, the um, the scuba divers who went down to to you know um, check the wreckage they saw that he was still fully buckled in that there was no effort uh, for him to try to vacate the plane there was no anything because of what happened and I think they call it black hole vertigo um, is that he was an instrument trained uh, in the plane and so as the plane was flying even though it was all nearly nose diving uh, into the ocean what they felt in the plane was that they were on level ground um, or not level ground but that they were flying at a level at a level rate until they realized you know far too late that they were actually nose diving um, and it's a kind of phenomenon that can happen in the air I guess um, and the whole point uh, that Levi Lesko was making in this story was that if you're not instruments trained um, then you don't really know how you should feel. You could feel like everything is going fine when really you are, you are nosediving into the ocean, right? So how do you 
Use your instruments to, uh, to check your feelings and to make sure that your feelings and what you feel um, are actually consistent with what God says. And that's the first instrument, is the Word of God. And hopefully you've noticed this theme, the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God, right? You've got to always come back to this. Does, you know, the wisdom that you're hearing out there, the, the thing that you think makes sense, does it make sense compared to this? The thing that you're feeling out there, uh, even though it might be strong and, and passionate, does it align with this? And if not, will you trust God enough to do what he says in this and trust that this process will be uh, life to your bones and to your mind and to your heart and all that kind of stuff, even though it might feel like you're missing out on something smaller He's got something bigger for you promised, okay? So, your physical, your mental, your emotional, you get the drift, right? There are things to do. There are ways to check how you're thinking and how you're feeling. Um, he has given us his scripture for this pur- purpose. We've got to follow it, okay? Uh, let's look back at the scriptures and uh, let's keep going in Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at verse 9, okay? We looked at the... Um, kind of the physical, mental, and, and uh, emotional place of our, of our body, right? That there will be healing to the body and strength to the bones. He goes on to talk about material possessions. Verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Basically, if you give him the first of everything, he'll give you everything you need. If you give him the first of everything, he'll give you everything you need and probably even more so. Okay, Um, and that's a huge deal. The first of your produce of your entire harvest, right? For for Bible people, uh, farmers, that's that's their livelihood. That's everything in their livelihood. That's their home. That's their money. That's that's everything, right? And so everything that God has given you, all of these material possessions that He's given you, will you give Him a portion of that first? Will you give Him a portion of that first? Obviously, first of your money. Right? Whatever you make from your job, whatever you get, um, that income that you get, will you give him a portion of that money? Um, and then it goes into your other material possessions, things you've bought with your money, for example, your home, your, your car, your you know, whatever. And I know it's kind of hard to say, you know, I commit my vehicle um, to the use of the Lord. You know what I mean? And how do you give your vehicle first to the Lord? Um, and that's kind of hard to weigh and measure, but I would say this, part of what it could be is just having a willingness and an understanding that at any point in time, God could call you to use that thing, um, at which point you use it, right? Whatever that is, um, whether it's giving a pair of shoes away to somebody else who needs them more, um, or, you know, giving a car ride to somebody, you know, broken down on the side of the road, and that's just an opportunity to share the Lord with somebody, to share love with somebody, uh, to host somebody in your home, um, on and on. Right? So give of your resources, and then everything else be ready to give as the Lord, um, as the Lord assigns uh, and, and ordains um, you know, as you go about your day-to-day and week-to-week and that kind of stuff. Right? Um, I think it was C.S. Lewis who said, if you aim at heaven, um, you know what, I'm not even going to try because I'm terrible at remembering quotes. Something about <laughs> uh, if you, aim, if you at, aim at heaven, then you get not only get heaven, but you get uh, earth as well. If you aim at earth, um, then you don't get both. Um, something along those lines. And listen, so set your aim. What is your aim with your money, with your resources? It needs to be aimed at heaven first. You've got to give it to the Lord first, to trust the Lord with those things first, and he'll give you everything else. He'll give you so much more. Okay. Let's read on in verse 11 and 12. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. All right, that's a New Testament principle. Uh, If you look at Hebrews 12, that kind of quotes this passage, uh, or at least uh, has a synonymous kind of um, saying there too, and the idea is that this instruction, this wisdom that comes from the father to the son, um, even that, right, maybe it's not uh, material possessions, but it is uh, instruction and advice. Trust the Lord in these places too. Right? Trust um, that if uh, a piece of instruction or advice is given to you, um, first of all, in alignment with the scriptures and in love, uh, to not be one of those hard-headed people like I am so often um, and, and reject it right away, uh, but to take it seriously. Right? I'm curious, how, how are you when it comes to um, 
accepting advice, uh, accepting instruction. Um, this is one of those places where I struggle at, and I know it's because of just a prideful thing in me. I like to kind of do things my own way, um, and um, it takes a lot for somebody to give me a piece of advice and for me to, to really kind of wrap my head around it and then think, okay, that's worth it, or that's better than what I was already thinking, and then to put it into practice. It's, it's hard for me, honestly. Um, and, and sometimes it takes persistence on that other person to, you know, either mandate it, you know, if it's like an overseer of, of mine, um, or to persistently, you know, go at it until I prove myself wrong uh, by making the mistake. Um, and, you know, at which point they can say, well, I told you so, uh, you crazy person, All right, Listen to me next time. Listen to my advice next time. Um, but I want to encourage you um, that if you are like me, um, let's be prayerful and work um, at our embracing of, of loving correction and advice. Um, let's, let's default to that. Let's embrace that and trust the Lord uh, even with that first piece of wisdom because um, we need that accountability. We need people speaking into our lives. Um, and to pretend like we don't means also to pretend like we know everything, and we don't. I certainly don't, and I, I, I should not pretend uh, that way. And so... Listen, embrace loving correction uh, and, and advice, and that will certainly be part of, of trusting the Lord with all of your being, not relying on your own understanding, um, but in all your ways acknowledging Him, and He'll make your path straight, right? Sometimes it will take another person to help you acknowledge Him uh, beyond your own understanding. Um, and so we need to listen to people, especially people who are marked by the Spirit, right? Um, who uh, are in God's church, who are lovers of Jesus Christ and uh, adamant followers of him, right? If they speak into your life, you better have ears open to hear uh, and hearts open to receive. Whenever you come into, um, like I know our times now, you know, in the digital form, uh, it's been hard for me even on Sunday mornings to just to just be able to go into that setting and to have a ears open and hearts ready to receive uh, what Brett might be sharing or what the worship uh, is, and it's just easy for me to be distracted and to not let it sink in. Uh, but listen, if you go into those modes prayerful, um, humble, <laughs> ready to listen, ready to receive, um, and just have that mentality, that intentionality, uh, the Lord will, uh, will do that work. Um, we've just got to trust him with it. Uh, and to get over whatever we're going through, you know, or whatever it is that's in the way, just get over it. Uh, some of the things are that small. We can just get over it um, and trust him with it. So anyways, I've held you up long enough. We've gotten through verse 12 now. Um, and, and please, why don't you take a few minutes to think about these things and uh, think about all the aspects of the different paths of life and think, you know, what would it mean for me to trust God in that specific area? Um, and then what can you do today? Uh, to begin, uh, to put that trust uh, into motion, to let it go to your head, to your heart, and to your hands um, so that you might trust the Lord and know that his way is better, um, that you might know his promises and then see them fulfilled uh, in, your, in your living. Love you guys. Look forward to, uh, to sharing this time with you again soon in the next uh, week or so. And uh, um, listen, keep going. Uh, stay near to the Lord. He'll stay near to you. Love you, go. Love you all. We'll see you.